All right, Rocco Taco Army. We are 11 April 2022, and we have some Ethereum news, stuff miners do not want to hear. So we got Ethereum's first mainnet shadow fork goes live today, April 11, 2022. Move to POS continues. POS is proof of stake, moving from the proof of work model to the POS model. Um, let's see, the shadow fork will stress test the developer's assumptions on existing test nets and the main net. So there's several reasons why they're doing this. It. Obvious for energy costs, because proof of work is the miners. I'm a miner, we get rewards for helping solve the puzzle, the piece of the puzzle, the transactions in the um, Ethereum network. The other reason is maybe that uh, the thought is the Ethereum people own a lot of the Ethereum. So if they go to prove the stake, they will then start getting a lot more rewards, dividends, as you, as you may, whatever you want to call it, interest, they'll start getting rewards on the Ethereum they hold through the POS model. So it's in their best interest to go to proof of stake. So there's that thought process as well too. Uh, yeah, it's in their best interest, obviously. Money money motivates. Uh, let's see, Ethereum's first main net shadow fork went live today as the developers of the world's second largest cryptocurrency by market cap continue transitioning the backing network to a proof of stake model. And again, like I said, it's a way to stress test their assumptions. They're, they're still in testing mode to switch any piece of software to upgrade any piece of software takes a lot of uh, careful planning, diligence, testing, testing, testing. You do not want to basically rule out a new version and destroy what's currently working fine. And that's why they got it. They got a test. So it may not happen in June, which is their planned date for the uh, switch, the merge. Uh, they don't, I don't know. It takes a long time to move software to just do a major upgrade like that. Because if you go out and break stuff, it's not going to make the current people happy. So I don't know. What they really should be focused on, in my opinion, is the gas fees. The gas fees make Ethereum unusable. It's almost like you can buy it, but to move it, it's ridiculous. I, I have stuff in a Coinbase wallet. Just a couple things that are on that damn Ethereum network. And for me to move, say, 50 bucks worth of uh, Ethereum tokens of other coins to uh, another wallet, it costs more than the value of the freaking coins I have in the wallet. So they're stuck there. I'm not moving them. I'm not going to deposit Ethereum just to move money out and break even. It doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's, it's annoying. But as a miner, I get those rewards through getting, you know, the gas fees help pay for my rewards. So it's, it's a mixed bag right now. So having said that, the best solution is to mine crypto in Ethereum right now, but get paid out in Bitcoin or another coin. Because once you get the Ethereum, what are you going to do with it? You're not going to transact it because every time you transact the damn thing, they're going to nail you in gas fees. So you end up losing money. And the normal people out there who are, who are looking at crypto and trying to get into it, when they find out about these gas fees, it's going to kill Ethereum. So I think once Ethereum loses its fan base of the miners, which are keeping it propped up, making it noticeable, keeping it in the press, uh, once the miners go away, I think I think the legs are going to fall out from Ethereum. That's my hunch. I think it's going to go down big time. People are going to lose interest in it. It's not going to be the buzzword. And yeah, NFTs and all that crap, whatever. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I could be wrong. But once you alienate your main, not customer base, your main user base, which are the miners, and you have such a high fee structure that is still going to exist, I don't see how it's going to do well. But I may be wrong. I'm an idiot. So... Whatever I say, do the opposite, and that's not financial advice. So let's go to another article. Let's keep this as short and sweet as possible, four minutes in. So here's another one. You today, first ever shadow fork happens on Ethereum. Right now, Ethereum POWPOS merge is being stress tested in a unique shadow fork that developers unveiled. Well, they unveiled this a while ago on a um, live stream from... I forget what it's called, Ethereum Today or what it was on YouTube. So it's nothing new. Uh, let's see what this guy says. First mainnet fork ever takes place on Ethereum. Uh, we're very close. Who's this guy? Oh, my God. Marius van der Bijan. Sounds like a Bond villain. We're very close to a historical event. We're testing POS on Ethereum. Today will be the first mainnet shadow fork ever. We're roughly 690 blocks. 
Uh, approximately two hash away from TDD, follow here. Okay, they really encrypted these acronyms, so TDD and all this. All right, you guys got, I know, it's Twitter, but all right, total difficulty level. So there they're, they're showing stuff. I don't know who this guy is. Now, remember, in any organization, there's always the press people, the front office people, and then there's the back office engineers that do things. Press will obviously say stuff that they think the public wants to hear, the users, the investors. And whereas in the behind the doors, the engineers are going, what? What are we doing today? We're actually testing? No, we're not. <laughs> Come on. We're still fixing this bug from last week. Give us a break. They don't want to hear that. There's always a difference. I work in those shops. I understand how it works. There's the BS PR front office stuff that push out articles like this or this guy, Marius van der Vingen, uh, Bond villain living in the volcano, who is saying that, hey, they're doing it. I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it, but uh, whatever. Shadow Fork. Shadow Fork requires interaction with Beacon Chain infrastructure. Its mechanisms will be relaunched several times. Its configurations will be of crucial importance for the next phase of Ethereum progress. Yeah, all right. So there's this one. It's a dress rehearsal before the merge. You guys get the gist. So there's that one. Let's go to the other one. Fortran. Ethereum just ran a major merge test, bringing it one step closer to a game-changing upgrade. Okay. And there's some guys cheering over something. I don't know what that's about. Oh, commercial. Uh, for years, Ethereum developers had promised a huge upgrade that would, among other things, dramatically increase, decrease the amount of energy used by a blockchain and make it eco-friendly. I don't think that's the motive here. I think that's the PR front facing of it. I think that's the BS factor. Not fake news, but that's the BS factor of Ethereum. Uh, they want to go to proof of stake because the people that own Ethereum have a lot of the coin. They can then start getting dividend interest rewards on the Ethereum they hold through the proof of stake model to follow the money. It's not about saving anything. It's not about your safety. It's not about this, the uh, uh, saving the earth and all that. It's not about that, guys. It's about money. All right. And again, like I said, there's the front office and then there's the real people that do the work, the engineers. The uh, test was a dresser, so it was called the merge, not the purge. That's a different problem. Uh, let's see. The timeline for the real merge hasn't been confirmed yet. After its next test, set for April 22, developers will have a better understanding for when it may happen. May, may, may is the key word. Uh, Ethereum developer predicts that the merge <coughs> will happen in July. Although he said that's a rough estimation. So this guy is probably in the gray area. He's an Ethereum developer. But they're talking to him, so he's not a total introvert because he can actually speak. So he must be a hybrid engineer slash PR guy because most engineers don't know how to speak to people. And uh, they always look down at other people's shoes. They never look up. And, uh, yeah, that's what we learned at where we worked is how do you know an extrovert engineer when he looks at other people's shoes? So yeah, they never look up. Try saying a hi to a, an engineer introvert in the hallway. They just like, can't compute. I'm, I'm, I'm. They just keep walking. It's so sad. Oh, my God. Then there was one place I worked. They had a set of three doors, wide doors, for the cafeteria. The middle set was the exit for the flow out. The two side were the entrance. And they said enter above the door. The engineers got that right. They'd always go through the exit door because they never looked up at the sign. They always were looking down at the ground. It's like introversion, lack of confidence. And But in their little brains, they can do four I equals one you know, hash map and uh, give me an associative array and divide by two. That's what they can do best. And that's fine. All right. That's all we got. I mean, the stuff's going on again. I think it's all PR right now. So how'd the test go? Wait a minute. To test the merge on Monday, developers attempted what's called a shadow fork. Again, this is old news. They already talked about this. With this, they were able to recreate what would happen during the merge without impacting the Ethereum main net. Watch them inadvertently make Skynet. Yeah. Something to think about. All right. I don't know. You guys get it. It's the same old news, same old stuff you miners have been hearing. You'll believe it when you see it. But having said that, I'm not buying any graphics cards right now. They're still above MSRP. And I don't want to buy a car. I can't ROI anything on it with the Ethereum merge maybe happening this year, most likely after July. But a graphics card prices are way too high. So for you scalpers, resellers out there, you know, you might just want to drop your price down, cut your losses, empty all the boxes out of your living room, 
and uh, ship them out right now. But uh, I'm not buying until they drop a lot more uh, below MSRP, which MSRP will probably in a few months seem very high. You know, no one's ever going to get MSRP anymore after a few months with those graphics cards. Yeah. Now I see people pushing ASIC cards, ASIC machines. I, d I don't get it. I understand but they're all overseas. You got to pay all that sh all that stuff just to get the things. Some of these companies only accept crypto for payment, and overseas crypto only payment. Uh, it's a dedicated machine ASIC for a single algorithm. If that algorithm goes away, it becomes a big doorstop. Uh, what if you get that machine and it's not right, or you got the wrong thing, or it's missing something? There's no buyer guarantee when you ship somebody crypto. How can you how can you dispute it? Or you never got the equipment, you know, and uh, if you have a credit card, yeah, yeah, you can say, hey, listen, they never shipped it or they shipped me the wrong thing or it was destroyed when I got it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when you send someone crypto to buy something, I don't know, man, you're that's a risk to me right now yet in this whole using crypto to buy crap ecosystem. So one place does sell ASIC miners out of the UK and they do just that only accept crypto. I, I can't do it, man. I just don't trust that I'm not dropping five thousand bucks on a freaking ASIC miner when I can't, you know, when I don't have any buyer protection. Once you got my crypto, I'm not getting that back. You guys could say, hey, we shipped it to you. It fell off the container ship in the North Atlantic. Tough. Sucks to be you. And I don't want to deal with that. It's just not worth the squeeze for me. Yeah, I don't know. Just my thought. Let me know what you think. There's got to be some places in the States where you can buy this stuff using a credit card. And that's what I'm looking for right now. Oh, uh, that's all I got. I want a little ramble there. So here we go. We're doing this whole merge again. Oh, wait. Oh, they, on the 22nd, they'll do another merge test. Uh, let's see. Though many might be impatient as the merge has been delayed a multiple times in the past. Uh, let's see. This guy says that the various tests are necessary. Yeah, you better test this, dudes. If you push this crap out there and it breaks everything, people are going to bail on you guys. Say, oh, well, it was, it was cute while it lasted. But if they can't push out a new upgrade without destroying what's currently there, it's not going to look good. I mean, in the government, people do that. They just push out crap and break things. They don't care. But uh, private companies like this or private projects like this, uh, which uh, have a vested interest in succeeding, they don't do that. Uh, let's see. A lot of investment relies on Ethereum. It not only powers Ether, the second largest cryptocurrency, but it also supports popular decentralized de uh, finance like DeFi applications and non-fungible tokens NFTs. Yeah, if you go out there and push something out there, it's going to destroy already stuff that have built upon your platform. You're really going to like screw yourself. And I, they should have done this a lot sooner, but they waited. Now you got DeFi NFTs out there, and you go out and mess with those things. Now those people are not going to be happy with you, and they're going to start looking for alternatives like Solana or the other the other um, competitors to Ethereum. And that's probably what's going to happen. And uh, I think those guys are hoping they push out this POS merge just so they break everything and then they'll start growing because they'll be the success. Yep. Oh, well. What does he say here? This is a significant engineering undertaking. Yeah, no crap. A lot of testing and preparation goes into such endeavors. The mantra for such mission critical upgrades usually is it will happen when it's ready. Yeah. So this is the old Boeing way before Boeing got taken over by just the corporate greed guys and they split away from the engineering philosophy as is do it right. Safety's number one, do it right or don't do it at all. And now hopefully Ethereum is adopting that mantra. Uh, don't become Boeing the way it is today where they're just trying to please shareholders and making crappy planes like the, uh, uh, what is that? 737 max where it was all just greed driven. That was a mistake. Let the engineers run the company, listen to your engineers that's the way it should be. They're the ones that are making your product. You make quality and then the success and money will follow. All right. That's all I got. Ethereum's on the merge move, baby. Stay tuned.